right, the third stage in uh, bringing up a pot is once you have centered it, you've dropped the middle, you've compressed the wall, the third stage is compressing the clay between your fingers of your hands as you gently pull up. This compression is what's going to make the wall thinner and taller. Now, up until this point, my left hand has always been on the left hand side. This is where my hands do a big switch. The left now becomes the interior hand. The right is the exterior hand. If the wall were not there, I would be pressing my fingers together like so. Okay. The big difference is I'm not pressing it against my palm. If you press it against your palm, you really don't have uh, a very specific pressure point and it's way harder to control. Um, if you like to use the sponge on, in a one of your hands, I usually, if I use it, I do it on the right hand side. You can do it without it though too. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I lock my hands together in whatever way is comfortable for you. My elbows must be locked to my legs or to my uh, side. My hands are locked. I squeeze my fingers toward one another as I raise my hands. See, my fingertips would have been touching had the clay not been there. All right, so that was one pull, and you can see that it started to go a little bit thinner and a little bit wider. Now, one thing to remember about as you are pulling up a wall, the wall is always thicker at the base and slightly thinner at the top. Not until the very end does it get uh, all the way even. If you have a really thick rim and it's thin underneath there, it's going to fall apart on you. Okay, I'm going to add some speed back to my wheel again. I'm going to do this again. Hands locked together, fingertips across from each other as I pull up. You can see that a few little chunks of clay came off of my sponge. That's pretty normal. I'm just going to soak up any bubble, uh, puddle, sorry, puddle that's in the bottom. I'm going to add a little bit more water again because I have to have water wherever my fingertips are going to be. There we go. A little rim, uh, ring of clay came off there. I'm going to do that again. Fingertip to fingertip and pull. Now all I want to do for this particular piece is I want to show you all how to make a straight cylinder. Most items that I throw are made from a straight cylinder. Um, plates, I don't do it that way and you'll see that in a little bit on a different, different video. Now one thing that I did just do here was I uh, kind of did the duck bill that I did earlier but just with the rim. I'm compressing the rim. You never want a really thin rim or it will be fragile. Alright. I'm going to try this again. Now what I'm going to do, you can see that my hand couldn't touch right at the beginning, but now it can finally touch. Sometimes when it gets a little bit taller, you have to move your hand positioning and uh, they might not be able to touch the whole, whole time. So this, uh, by the way, I don't know if I said at the beginning, but this was a two pound piece of clay, I believe. And I'm just pulling this into just a cylinder. I have a slight air bubble in the bottom of this wall. That's why it's got that little bit of a bump there. I had a bunch of recycled clay, just scraps that I had used, and apparently I was not diligent enough to get that air bubble out all the way. So we're going to do that again. Now all I'm just trying to do is get a nice even thickness wall as I bring this up. There we go. Okay. Now where it flares out right down here at the bottom, this is something as a beginner it's hard to get rid of. But that should be a goal. You want to attempt to get to the point where you don't have that thick area because the more clay you leave on there, that means the more you trim off and the more trimmings you have to recycle. And that's, that's always a pain to recycle trimming. So I try to get off uh, as much clay as I possibly can at the time of throwing. There we go. Just resetting that rim. And that's looking pretty good. Um, I will take my wooden knife. I'll show you how I would show my students how to 
you know, just clean off that edge right there. If it was flaring out just a little bit, you can easily trim that away. Okay. I think I'll expand my view slightly here on my camera. There we go. Hopefully you can see the top of that now if you weren't able to see it a minute ago. Okay, and I'm going to do one more pull. Now, since almost everything is made from a cylinder, you know, you could think about how this could transform into a pitcher, a cup, a crock. It could be really so many different things.